Hello, this is Craig, and welcome to the first part of a new tutorial. And this is a Unity tutorial on how to build a space game. In specific, the design I have in mind is very much like uh, the old Star Control games. If you've never played them, go play them. Uh, there's all sorts of free versions available. Um, if you have played them, then you know what I'm aiming to do, and we're going to do it. We're going to use 3D graphics uh, and a couple of Unity's more powerful systems like Particles instead of doing everything with sprites. Um, but it all starts from this screen here. This is a new project. What I've done with this project is I've added in two empty folders called Blender and Scripts. And I've also added in Particles and Skyboxes. These are the default Particles and Skyboxes that everyone can use. It's not required that you have Unity Pro. So we're going to go ahead and create a ship. And for now, we're just going to make our ship a capsule. Uh, oh, we're zoomed way in. So there's our capsule ship. Um, but the ca capsule is pointed in the wrong direction, so we actually need to create a container. This container will be our actual ship object, and we're going to go ahead and stick it at the center of the map, and we're going to put the capsule on it, and then we're going to just uh, move the capsule to the center of the ship and then rotate it. Uh, I think that's correct. Yeah. And then rotate it 90 degrees so that it's pointed vaguely forward, and then we're just going to flatten it out some. Um, and that means that we'll have a ship that has some kind of ship-like shape because it'll be a little while before we create actual models for our ship. And I'll be teaching how to do that in Blender, um, but not for a while yet. So this is our ship, but it's very, very dark in space right now. So create ourselves a directional light. Doesn't matter the specifics, just need something to light the scene up. And then when we hit play... Oh, wow, majesty. So I've actually moved the main camera away from where it originally was just a little bit, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape it to the ship by just dragging it onto the ship object. So this is pointed straight down, and it's going to be 20 meters above the ship, 20 space meters <laughs> above the ship. I've also already added in a skybox of my choice. It doesn't really matter. Um, much later on we'll have to create our own, not skyboxes, but backdrops. So the skybox in this case is just out of habit, because I tend to put skyboxes in all of my projects. Um, but in this case, it, it won't matter at all. So there we are. Even if we move the ship, the camera will stay attached to it. Uh, we're actually going to have to fix that a little bit later, because we, we don't want the camera to spin when we spin. So our next step is to create a basic ship script, which we'll call ship. And we need a second script that's separate from it for uh, ship controls. And the reason... No, and if you spell it wrong, just delete it and create it again. Jeez. Well, the reason we need two separate files is that, con. Jeez. I think that uh, my computer is on its last legs here, but that's okay. I'm getting a new one. All right. So now we've got two uh, different objects, and the reason we need two separate objects is because the ship object handles all the physics for ships, and that includes NPC ships that you're not controlling. So we separate out the controls into a separate class, and we just put them both onto the ship. Voila. So we need to go ahead and put in some stuff here in addition to those. For example, we're going to be using a rigid body. Now we're not going to be using uh, a rigid body for actual uh, collision detection and so on. Uh, we're not going to be doing physics with our rigid body. We're just going to be doing velocity manipulation. So put drag at 1, angular drag at 1, turn use gravity off, uh, and that should be fine. So now what we're going to do is we're going to be able to use our apply force and our rigid body dot velocities to make it so that our ship moves with inertia. We don't have to build the inertia scripts ourselves. All right, so that was pretty fast. Let's go ahead and just build the basics of, of our ship physics and our ship controls. Uh, and it shouldn't take more than two or three minutes uh, to boot up the editor. Hold on, let me pause until it boots. I'm really looking forward to the new computer. That took way too long. Alright, so here we are in our ship system, and this is going to be where we do the basic physics of the ship. So we're going to have a couple of things. We're going to have a throttle, um, and f later on we're going to need things like this. So uh, max thrust equals 1 for this point. And what we're going to be doing is the actual output of our ship down here. We're just going to say, oh, it's actually best to do this in a fixed update. So void fixed update. The difference is uh, that the fixed update uh, doesn't... 
it, it, it works uh, at a physics level rather than at a gameplay loop level so it works very well if you're trying to apply forces and in this case we're just going to go ahead and apply the force so we say rigid body dot apply force uh, so it's actually not apply force it's add force and then we need to define our force our force is going to be in the forward direction so trans transform dot forward times time dot delta time and then times throttle and then times max thrust and then times some number um, we probably don't know which, which one exactly yet so here's our ship controls and this is what the player will be uh, interacting with so here we're gonna say uh, float vert equals input dot get axis vertical and uh, unity already has a vertical axis set up for us it's linked to up and down it's also linked to W and S so then we're gonna go ahead and uh, we need to make it so that the ship knows where the actual we need to make it so the controller knows what ship it's controlling so we do we'll require component type of ship and then we do uh, protected ship ship and then we do ship equals get component ship alright so now we have the ship available and we're just gonna say ship dot throttle plus equals vert times time dot delta time and over here in ship we're gonna do that exact same thing but we're gonna do it with type of and this is so that we don't have any mistakes later when we try and create ships that are different and realize that we have the wrong stuff attached so these these require components are good for making sure that you understand exactly what's supposed to be connected all the time alright so we're gonna go back into unity and we're gonna hit play and here you can see that our velocity is in fact working fine we are accelerating along the z-axis but we can't tell let's just go ahead and put in an object real quick here so that we can see what the heck's going on I'm gonna put it below our axis and off to the side a little bit see we're flying away alright let's go ahead and do rotation next uh, so here in ship we're gonna have a uh, uh, we could do it here in ship we're actually going to for now put it under the controls later on we'll move it over into ship when we start to create the NPC controls and then we will do uh, we do need a rotation speed so let's go ahead and create that and here over in the control section we're gonna make us a horizontal turns our ship we actually are have the same um, the ship controls is on the same object as the ship itself so we could just write transform but uh, we're actually gonna do chip transform because later on it may result that we actually need the ship controls to be attached to a different object uh, so in this case ship dot transform uh, dot rotate around vector 3 dot up and then the angle would just be ors times time dot delta time uh, times ship dot rotation rotation speed um, and I actually don't know how fast that's going to be because I've forgotten whether that's in uh, degrees or radians oh that is in radians that's fine it's a little bit fast but I think we can live with that so now we can move forward and we can turn but the camera is turning with us which is not what we want so we're gonna go ahead and uh, uh, have this uh, ship controls rather have this understand that there's a camera beneath us that we need to detach and then keep affixed manually so it doesn't doesn't rotate with us so we're gonna do public uh, camera uh, ship cam and then over here in unity we're going to go ahead and drag our main camera onto our ship cam slot that we've just created and then back here we're gonna go ahead and dictate what we're gonna do so ship cam dot transform dot parent equals null so we've just detached it so what we've what we just said for it to do is uh, although you're technically see how it, it stopped being our child when we hit play and now we're wandering around without it so the next step is to go down here into update uh, and we can do this in update rather than fixed update because it's a visual change and we'll just do ship cam dot transform dot position equals uh, uh, transform a uh, ship dot transform dot position plus vector three dot up times uh, 
camera range. What's camera range? Um, that's camera range. All right. Are we done yet? Is that all we get done for the first episode? There's one more thing we can do in this very first episode. Uh, we'll just go ahead and say float scroll equals input dot get axis mouse scroll wheel and all of these come preset up by unity uh, to to just do uh, what they say they do so you don't have to worry about setting these up yourself unless your keyboard is mapped funny or you've got a controller or something actually I think controllers work too so uh, camera if if scroll uh, we can just say camera range plus equals scroll times time dot delta time um, but we're actually going to do a, a, a little bit of a trick here because otherwise it's going to move very slowly. Camera range times. So what we've just done, this is a trick that if you've never worked with cameras before, you may be a little bit unfamiliar with. We're saying that the wider the camera range, the, the farther away the camera is, the further our scrolling will move it. Um, and also we don't need this time dot delta time. That's uh, The mouse scroll wheel is time independent, so we can just scroll it and it ticks. It doesn't have a, a motion per frame or anything like that. So camera range times scroll should allow us to scroll faster when we're further away and slower when we're close, which allows us to control our zoom organically. Uh, and to show you that, we're going to go ahead and zoom in. And you can see how the zoom gets slower. And then we're going to zoom out and you can see how the zoom gets faster. Nice and easy. Uh, now, presumably you will find that this is backwards um, because uh, it's just the opposite way that you might expect it to be for the scroll wheel, so reverse it, and there you go. So now we've got a camera that sticks with our ship, but doesn't actually turn with our ship, allowing us to keep the same uh, 2D axis around. We've also got a throttle that makes our ship move forward, regardless of whether or not we're pressing, whether we continue to press forward. So once you've pressed forward, you'll continue to move forward until you stop. Uh, so in the next episode, we're going to be creating our engine uh, visuals and our HUD for showing our throttle, and we're also going to make the throttle a little bit chunkier. Um, ooh, and we ran into the planet. So I'll see you next time.